I think the most common question I've received after posting the DTG vs. Transfer Printer video is what does it actually cost to operate a white toner laser transfer printer? In this video, I'm gonna break it down into three parts. First, we'll go over the variable cost of transfers, then I'll talk about the more fixed operating costs like toner and drums that you might not have considered. And then we're gonna put it all together by creating a hypothetical printing business to see what our profit and expense might look like if we ran a full scale transfer business. I believe that it's important to note even though transfers get most of the attention when it comes to cost calculations, toner does get consumed with every transfer. While toner cartridges are rated for between 12 and 35,000 sheets, we need to understand that number more thoroughly before we just assume that we'll never incur a toner bill. If you're curious about the real yield numbers, I'll get into that at length later on in the video. So when we combine transfers, toner, wearable parts, and other unforeseen charges, hopefully you'll have a clear understanding of what to expect out of a flagship printer like the 800W that I'm using. If you haven't already, Take a second to like the video and subscribe to the channel with the bell notifications turned on. And when you finish the video, if you leave a comment, I'll make sure I respond. If you want to engage with other helpful people in the community, including myself, be sure to also join the Discord channel, link in the description below. First, let's take a closer look at the biggest long-term expense, transfers. The sheer number of different transfers available on the market is staggering. There are transfers for very specific use cases like foil or single color fluorescent transfers. These type of transfers take basic cut vinyl head on. Not only do they open up the metallic and fluorescent colors that are usually limited to plastisol and vinyl, they combine the on-demand nature of cut vinyl with the ability to produce intricate designs that would otherwise be impossible to cut or weed on a vinyl plotter. Today we're not going to dig into the specialty transfers or the G-Wiz features of the printers, the primary purpose for a laser transfer printer in my facility is general purpose transfers that allow me to run full color on demand production to supplement our screen printing operation. So my focus is on operating costs in a production environment. One thing that I really like about the variety of transfers that are available is that I can dial in my costs to meet a broad range of production times and budgets. A big factor to consider when calculating your cost is that transfer cost doesn't necessarily translate directly into imprint cost. So far, most of my prints have been laid out like gang sheets rather than single image transfers. So what I do is I use the blank space to output custom size labels for the neck tags, full color left chest prints, and in some cases I can even include a full sized design as a ride along to another design. In fact, I have a job coming up where we'll be using iColor premium transfers to personalize high visibility workwear with great profit margins using this strategy. Take a second to like this video and subscribe if you're interested in finding out how we achieved over 95% profit margin while saving hours of production time. So, on an upcoming job, the customer requested a left chest initial and a last name. Now, we charge $4.50 per name, whether we're doing embroidery, vinyl, or now laser transfers. But each eight and a half by 11 transfer should be able to hold over 30 names. At a cost per sheet of $3.50 per transfer, each imprint costs barely more than 10 cents. The total cost is gonna be about $10.50 worth of transfer paper on over $400 in additional revenue. Labor is always a major factor. However, because we skip the plotting and the weeding step that we would normally have with heat transfer vinyl, the process potentially saves us hours with a similar imprint cost. Also, since we don't have to pre-treat, press them for 90 seconds to 120 seconds, frame, mount, individually load the names off the computer, print them with a DTG, and then repress them for three minutes to cure them, we're also saving time over DTG. Considering how many of these blanks are high-vis polyester, many DTG printers would simply struggle to print on the polyester blanks anyways. On top of that, we're dealing with some vests and jackets that tend to have non-flat surfaces with reflective tape that's sewn down or raised pockets nearby, another factor that would preclude DTG altogether since they require perfectly flat imprint area across the entire framed surface. For the primary imprint areas, we'll use screen printing. So a four by 12 department name on the back or a three and a half by five inch logo on the front will also only cost a few cents in plastisol, preventing us from wasting valuable production time or spending money on transfers for the bulk of the order. In this case, having a multi-process capable facility allows us to control our costs while playing to the strengths of the process in a way that improves our efficiency. Let's talk specifics about transfer costs. The three main transfers that have my attention right now are the iColor Standard, the Select, and the Premium. 
These are the main ones I believe screen printers or DTG alternative seekers are gonna be landing on. The standard transfers are reasonably bright and vibrant, and they're also decently stretchy, but in my opinion, they're a bit more difficult to work with when you're first getting started. They cost about $2.20 for an half by 11, and about $5.50 for a 12.6 by 19 A to B set. Overall, I've been using the standard transfers for most of the work I do, including my Brands and Empires apparel that I've been giving to friends and family. The downside for me is that it has a bit of a papery feel to it. That does get mitigated by putting half tones into the the artwork and using craft paper to repress the shirts, but it does stand out to me as a printer. The select transfer is the one that I want to love the most because at a buck 80 for an eight and a half by 11, it's a bit cheaper than the standard, but it's also far easier to work with when transferring, at least in my limited experience. It also has a flat matte look to it that right out of the gate looks great and it's super stretchy and comfortable to the touch. The issue that I have with it is that it's less opaque. So for black shirts, you're either gonna have to crank up the white toner output, which from what I understand can limit the washability or use it for more colored shirts other than black when opacity matters. Now the premium transfer is the one that everybody would want hands down if the price wasn't so prohibitive. It lasts 100 washes compared to the 50 or 60 for select and standard. It feels almost like a perfectly screen printed shirt rather than a transfer. It's extremely bright and vibrant, has great stretchability. The only downside is that it's $3.95 for an eight and a half by 11 sheet and like $7.50 for an 11 by 17. That said, it's super easy to work with and I keep looking for excuses to make it make sense for my business. I've landed on left chest emblem, um, small, easily ganged together logos, hat transfers, etc. For all of that, it's second to none. The cost per imprint is reasonable when you can get multiple images on a sheet. But for full-sized shirt designs, I wouldn't want to charge less than 25 bucks a shirt with very few exceptions because that would at least allow me to double the cost of the transfer, double the cost of the shirt, and charge for the toner while leaving a couple bucks left over for labor, squarely in DTG territory at that point. So that's where we stand with transfer costs, a very broad spectrum ranging from 70 cents all the way up to $7.95. Now let's talk about the silent cost of these laser transfer printers, and that has to be the toner. The cartridges are rated at 12,000 all the way up to 35,000 sheets for the iColor 800, but those are traditional yield calculations. So what can you really expect? The percentage of coverage for each sheet is calculated at 5% coverage. This is an industry standard practice and the toner has always been calculated unrealistically. Even for the paper industry, paper usage is closer to 20% when you're using black and white monochrome printing and 30% on average when working with color printing. In practice, I am certain that graphic-centric apparel transfers will without a doubt have coverage areas much higher than that, especially if your goal is to maximize the coverage area per transfer by gang sheeting images together. That means you could be looking at toner life much closer to three and 4,000 sheets if each transfer has 40 to 60% coverage. White toner will likely take the biggest overall beating, both because the cartridges cost more and because the channels are typically used more per transfer sheet. Right now, it's kind of hard to calculate the toner cost per transfer, but I believe it's safe to say that you're looking at between 20 and 70 cents worth of toner in most transfers with the potential of going over a dollar on a large transfer with a lot of coverage. There just isn't a lot of data about it right now and not many people have had their printers long enough to start running dry, but it is an eventual cost. And when it hits, you're looking at hundreds of dollars per cartridge, a full CMYW replacement on an 800W would run over 1500 bucks. Likely you would be replacing one color at a time with white being the first domino. But before you consider this overly alarming or you go and grab a pitchfork, bear in mind that the toner cartridges are yielding thousands of transfers worth of toner for about the same price as a few hundred prints on a DTG. I think that when you calculate it out, you're getting between 20 and 30 times as many prints, maybe even more, worth of toner images versus DTG images, with the primary cost really going towards transfers. I think a quick and dirty way to calculate the cost of toner is set aside between 10 and 20% of the cost of each transfer for toner and unexpected maintenance. So while I would save early for these, as well as other expected and unexpected expenses, you will have made many times the cost over before ever needing to swap a toner cartridge. Also, by the time you run out of any of these cartridges, you will already be in the habit of buying transfer paper, so it won't exactly be a culture shock unless you let yourself go completely unprepared for it and undercharge for each design, which is already a big no in terms of long-term success. Now, as far as maintenance and less common operating costs, that's something that no company 
especially not a DTG webinar would ever cover. And that's wear items, points of failure, smaller or less often expenses. I only wanna highlight this because laser printers simply don't have regularly scheduled maintenance or manual cleaning like you're gonna get with a DTG. When a toner cartridge, drum, or fuser is on its last leg, you may burn a few transfers in the discovery, but that's once in a blue moon. I think that's a small price to pay. For instance, drums, which are the laser version of print heads, are rated for at least 60,000 sheets on an iColor 800. That's an actual 60,000 sheets. Realistically, that's about two to three cents a transfer. So to put it in perspective, 60,000 sheets would be the equivalent of over a million dollars in revenue before needing to replace those. Other replacement parts include fusers and belts, and these are around $300 a pop, so far from a huge concern like a replacement print head would be for over $1,000. Now that we understand the costs associated with owning and operating a laser transfer printer, let's have some fun here and plug these numbers into a hypothetical production environment. So let me start by saying I am pulling these numbers out of the sky. I'm not basing them on any real numbers or any real business model. In our mock business, let's call it Bubba's Tea Trailer Incorporated, we operate out of a trailer that can be brought to a flea market to print live on the weekends. But while we're there, we take orders for bigger quantities that we can fulfill during the week. We've got a pretty successful shirt business. On average, we make 35 shirts a day on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We don't have to do much graphics design on the spot because most of our shirts are chosen from our customizable library of trucks, off-color jokes, and tattered flags from failed Southern uprisings. We charge anywhere from $21 to $25 a shirt, and between the buy two, get one half off deals and single purchases, let's just say that we turn about $800 a day with an average sale price of $23 a shirt. We also take orders for an average of about 60 shirts that we fulfill throughout the week. And we do those for about $18 a shirt when somebody buys at least a dozen. So let's calculate our costs and labor and see if we can still make a profit. First, let's assume that we're working with six ounce cotton t-shirts that cost us about $2.10 each. We're also using tabloid sized standard transfers that run about $4.20 a sheet. And our toner comes out to about 65 cents a transfer. And let's also assume that we have an employee that runs around for us and handles production while we schmooze with the customers. Each shift is eight hours and we pay them $9 an hour cash under the table like any reputable flea market vendor. That comes out to about $2.05 a shirt over the course of a day. Now I looked up booth rentals and it comes out to about $8 a day for an outdoor 16 by 20 spot large enough to park our trailer, including electricity. So if we pull all of that together, we're sitting at around $9.10 to make an average of $23 a shirt. That means each weekend we revenue, you know what? If you'd like to know how much we revenue, why don't you take a second to like the video real quick tap that subscribe button, and while you're down there, just click the little bell notifications. Let me know when you're ready. All right? Okay, so each weekend, we revenue $2,415 with $955 in overhead to profit $1,460. See, it doesn't stop there though. We also generate another 60 shirts worth of midweek business, and that brings in another $1,080 with about $540 in overhead. Now, so our profit margins are a little slimmer for the midweek business, but we're getting orders in bulk, and they pad our weekly numbers, which puts us at about $3,500 with a profit of $2,000 before taxes for this cash business. If we say that between the busy and slow seasons, these are the average numbers, Bubba's Tea Trailer Incorporated turns almost $175,000 with $100,000 in profit. That is a lot of room to reinvest into an expanding library of artwork, improve your presentation, and still make a good living. I actually had fun putting those fake numbers together and just kind of running calculations on what it would look like with a hypothetical business. I think in an upcoming video, what I'm gonna do is put together working backwards from a million dollars. What would it actually take logistically, hour by hour, day by day, to get to a million dollars in production business? And would it even be achievable on a white toner laser printer with the addition of extra heat presses and some employees to help run production. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video because we'll be exploring that and some of the other topics related to white toner printers and screen printing in the coming weeks and months. So make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in the next one.